How many of you here are making money by your passions right now? You do something that you don't want to do for real just to make money and you're also doing something from the passion. And then I see a lot of people going to jobs that they hate. And that's your only option. Do that by creating a strategy to go out from that. Because as I said, I mean, we are here. We don't know where we're going. Why should we do things that we don't love? Your passions can give you money. When I was 10 years old, I had a passion of singing. I remember I was a kid and then I went to sing. And then my, all my friends came to me and said, yeah, your voice is ugly. You can't sing. I accept that from them. I took that as my reality. And that was a check mark in a passion that I had that stayed inside of me and I didn't mark it as done. Why I'm saying that? Because your passions are the keys that unlock your purpose. If you don't check mark your passions, you get far away from who you are. Your passions are not there for no reason. There is a reason that you love what you love. When you check mark, you kind of get closer to who you really are. I want to talk to your friend and say, you know, I remember now a check mark that I have that I have to unlock. Let's do that. Two minutes, okay? <laughs> Most of the people are oriented. It's like the, the person that I choose, you know, I have a goal and I'm not going to make that happen anyway. But there is persons that are purpose oriented. Purpose oriented, it's when you do what you love. It's different. Goal oriented, it's when you choose to do something because you have to do and you hate it, but you do anyway. Like go to a job that you hate or go to a university that you hate, something that you don't like to do and you keep doing it for 20 years and then you get sick, and then you get, you know, old vest. And then you have purpose oriented that follow the passion. It's two different roads. There is two roads, the road of fear, the road of security that most of us are choosing. Now I'm going there because, you know, I need the money. Of course we need the money. I'm going there because my mom told them, and the society told. Then this kind, this road, this road doesn't take you close to who you are. And the other road, the road, that's what I love to do. That's my passion. I can transform my passion in money because I need money anyway. If I'm going goal-oriented, I need money. If I'm going purpose-oriented, I also need money. Which one's more fun? In the goal-oriented, you compare yourself. You always compare. Ah, but he's better. Ah, but it, it's competition. When you compare yourself with somebody you're already playing, you're already losing the game. If you play purpose, there is no cooperation because only you can do you. If Michael Jackson want to be you, what's your name? Nicholas. 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 Michael Jackson say, I'm gonna do Nicholas. <coughs> Who can do Nicholas best day Nicholas? Nobody, brother. Only you. Because you are you. If you're goal oriented, then synchronicity, there is no synchronicity because you're blind. You know? You're blind. I mean, you don't, you, you're not giving attention to who you are, you go oriented, you're going here this way. Do you think synchronicity is going to come there and say, bam, 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 I'm here. You have no eye to see. I want to tell you a story how I came to Sweden. You want to know? Yeah. Are you curious? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> okay, because this question is the question most get. You know, I think, uh, I think we immigrants get this question all the time. How did you come to Sweden? <laughs> <Some is like that. laughs> Synchronicity was what brought me to Sweden. One day I was in Brazil studying in a university that my dad was paying for me because in Brazil there is no grads school, you know. So my dad, that you already know him, he was like study oriented, pa, 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 said go to the university, study, I'm paying. I'm like no, 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 go. Okay, I went to the university. He always thought I was inside of the classroom. I mean, of course not. <laughs> I was never inside of the classroom. But I was always you know, trying to sell my clothes, you know, trying the things I'm passionate about. Making a long story short. That day, that guy became my business partner. That brought me to Sweden. 
synchronicity. Why? I was working for a, a company called Gateway College. That's a Norwegian company that brings students from Norway and Sweden to study in Brazil. Imagine the guy, the guy came from Norway, like totally, he couldn't speak no Portuguese. He came in the university and I was there, skipping class. <laughs> and then I said, okay, let's take capoeira to Sweden, 10 years ago. And then I came to Sweden. And then I come to the streets you know, with all this energy, believing myself. I was crazy enough, you know, when I came here to believe in myself. Stage, I like to talk, I like the camera. And I said, yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I started studying media here in Sweden. And then two months of school, I said, now I'm gonna create my own web TV and I'm going to the streets, you know, do my own TV. Yeah, I was crazy enough to believe myself that time. And then I was there, you know, going to the streets. I remember one day I had this big banner, huge banner with my face. Imagine. <laughs> Like in Sweden. <laughs> this was, I don't know, seven years. I don't know, seven years. <laughs> Imagine, brother. I was crazy enough to believe myself. People start to turn the back to me like this. And me, as you know, a Brazilian, I could not understand what was that. I said, you know, maybe I'm doing something wrong, you know. I'm trying to be me. Should I be me? I mean, it seems that if I try to be me, it's something wrong. And I started to feel really, you know, down. And I started to feel really bad because I was trying to do something that made me happy, that came from my inside, that was my passion. And the outside world start to say, why are you doing that? You're supposed not to do nothing different than the others. You should be the same as the others. And then I start to feel really depressed. I felt bad because I say, you know, why? Why should I be me? It can't be me. It, I'm, I'm hurting others being me. So that moment, I start to be introspective and became more goal-oriented. And then I start to go to places <coughs> that I wish you don't have to go. My biggest fear is when I start telling myself that I can be myself. It's when I start doubting myself. It's when I have conversations like that. That I look to me and I say, no, you can't. You're not good. Don't do that. They will not like it. That's, for me, it's my biggest fear. It's when my connection with myself gets that weak. Because when the world outside of you is telling you that you can't, like Yante do, and maybe sometimes our parents, like my dad did to me, he said, you know, the only road you can do is by going to the school, it's a study, and I hate school. So I said, no, I'm not going this road, I'm gonna create another road. So I had to tell myself all the time, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do, that is a road. And two things, your passions, that are your interests, the things you, that makes your heart sing. Pay attention to that, and pay attention to the communication you have between you and you, when you are thinking about your passions. What are you telling yourself when you are thinking about your, your passions and how you can make your passions become a reality? If you figure out these two things, it's halfway you go because everything is in the brain. Everything is here. You know, everything is in the way you control your state of mind. And then I said, I need help. Somebody need to help me because sometimes we need help. And the law of Yante is so tricky that they tell you that nobody can teach you anything. They say, no, but who is in to teach me something? 
That's the fucking trick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here sharing with you what I have an experience because I did. I'm not talking about something that I didn't do. You know, my business, I have a production company. I don't have a job. The only thing I do is that I have a production company, made a documentary that is like in 10 countries now, and then, you know, became like the outside of comfort zone, you know, inspirator in, in Sweden. And then I'm now working with like my new passion. You remember the check marks? Now it's a new one that's to inspire people to become the best version of what they can become. I decided, since 20 years old, I'm not gonna do things I don't want to do. Why? I don't want to follow my dad's road. I don't want to see a life doing things that I love to do after when I retire. I saw that with my dad. He started to transform himself when he retired and started you know, playing guitar and he started working in psychology, the thing that he's doing now but that is a price. I'm just saying that I decided to transform all my passions into my present life since I was 20 years old. I always ask my, myself, why should I wait until I retire so I can do the things I love? I only can talk about things that I've done and try to inspire the one that would like to transform their passions into profit. Keep it going. Yeah.